Hey friends, hope you all are doing well. Welcome back to my channel and if you're new, I'm super excited to meet you. I am going to paint another simple landscape. I realize I pretty much paint animals most of the time um, and I need practice painting clouds and landscapes. I've got a cloud video that shows using different brushes and tools, um, zinc white, titanium white and some matte medium. And then I have a simple landscape with a tree. It's one point perspective. And then I have another landscape with a little bit of color in the clouds. Okay, let's have some fun. Okay, let's take a look at what I have set up. I've got the word love written on my 8x10 canvas panel. I don't know, usually I get them from Michaels. I don't know where this came from. I don't know if favorite daughter gave it to me. Um, I bought it on Amazon and I forgot. Master, Master Touch Studio, I think I got it on Amazon. It seems quite nice. I like it. Um, so it's 8x10. I came up three inches from the bottom and put some artist tape. Um, you can use masking tape or painter's tape. Oh, the watercolor pens. I use watercolor pencils. They're from Michaels. I should grab the other brand by my easel. I keep plugging Michaels. I've got a three quarter inch Royal Lang Nickel flat brush and I have some color out. So I've got ultramarine blue. I have a mixture of heavy body and uh, basics just because it's what I could find lately. Um, we're about a year plus into the pandemic, but supplies sometimes are still hard to find. So just use what you have. Even if it's not a pandemic, use what you have. <laughs> I've got some quinacridone out because favorite daughter reminded me it makes some really nice purples. Um, you don't have to have it. You can use red and blue. I have cad yellow medium, titanium white, Mars black, and cad red. Oh, that's right, light. I meant to get out cad red medium. <laughs> we'll use the cad red light. Like I just said, use what you have. Oh, and I have a paint a guy that's going to come paint today. He was supposed to be here already. So if you know. I don't know, something abrupt happens, you'll know I had to go go greet him, let him in the house. Okay, I think first, oh, and I've got a sketch. So I've already, like, I looked online, I've got some reference photos, I have a cloud reference photo, a tree reference photo, and then I'm thinking grass here, because we're going to keep to the simple landscape theme. I'm doing a Nebraska Skies series, but what I want to what I'm telling you or what I'm trying to say is that I've already spent maybe an hour between looking for photos, doing a little sketch, a little mock-up. Um, sometimes some of the magic that you don't see on, you, that happens off camera, um, paintings take more time than they look, I think, on YouTube. There's what I'm trying to say. A lot of things look quicker in the videos. All right, so I'm gonna, oh, and also I might make this a two-parter if it goes kind of long. We'll just see. We might not need to do that. So I took just a pinch of blue and a pretty big blob of green there. So I hope all of you are doing well today. It's summer as I'm filming this in Omaha, Nebraska. We're gonna hit 100 this week. We've, it's, we had a really cool rainy spring, which was nice. Grass is super green, trees are green, um, but now we're having a really hot summer. We didn't have much in between. I think I might make a brown too to go with my grasses. So let's make an orange. I might, I might need a bigger palette. I'm trying to keep it all on camera. Actually, this cat red light might work really well. an orange it's already light oh I should have started okay I just made a mistake there I mean not a huge mistake but you want to start with the yellow 
because it's not nearly as strong. So the colors kind of, I have them going in strength. Um, although white's quite opaque. But the yellow isn't nearly as strong as the cad red light, as the quinacridone, as the ultramarine. And that, so I should have started with the yellow and then add a little bit of the red to it. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, you guys. That's still way too red, I think. Well, actually, let's just add a pinch of black and see what it does. Nah, yeah, we're okay. We're going to get a decent brown out of that. So I'm painting primarily here with primaries plus the quinacridone so you don't feel like you have to go out and buy a lot of colors. I. I should show you a shot of all my paints. I like to buy paint. I like to buy art supplies. You know, I buy purples because uh, it's just quick. I think it's quick, more, it's faster. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, I can't always talk and do. I'm kind of a single minded person, I'm not a multitasker. Um, I think it's just faster to have some pre mixed colors. Plus, they have some yummy colors, it's just fun. Okay, I don't know what else I want to do here. I don't want green, green grass. Oh, I'm cleaning off my palette knife just because I tend to clean things as I go. And then I'll make sure it's extra clean. Like I'll brush, I'll rinse off my brushes really well and then I'll wash them when I'm finished painting for the day. Okay, let's, I'm going to turn this upside down and maybe hold it. Hopefully that works. I'm doing a little bit bigger painting. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of both of those colors. And so like in, a, in the previous video where I had some colorful clouds, I had some straight up and down grasses sort of framing the corner and the bottom, and it's gonna need another coat. You could um, paint the whole canvas first and get a medium value color down. Then you need fewer coats of the grasses. It's up to you. But I've done a couple sort of yellowy brown wheat fields, so I thought we would stick more to the greens. And I may also time lapse this just a bit to speed it up. I've noticed um, the most so far, I've had my channel for a year plus. You know, people might watch, oh, 15 minutes is generous. You know, 12 minutes. So I don't know, I think they fast forward and watch parts of it. Or they might, um, there's controls if you don't know, there's controls. Oh, I think it's under the, looks like a gear or a cog on YouTube. You hover your mouse over it, click on it. Um, and, uh, sorry, I'm thinking. And you can speed it up. So even though I have a time lapse, you can speed it up even more, I'm pretty sure. Let me know in the comments if you do that. It doesn't offend me. I mean, these videos are for what you get out, you know, what you want to get out of them. Quite a few people have been going to my website and downloading the traceables and sending money. I think that's just awesome. I really appreciate that. Oh, I'm using my new microphone. I've used it in the last couple videos, so hopefully the sound's better. I know it'll be better when I'm at my big easel, because um, then when I turn my head then away from my phone, the sound would go down. Okay, I'm gonna dry this with a hair dryer. Okay, I just surface dried it for a couple minutes with a hair dryer, and I also, I don't know if you can see that. I just, I painted some on the edge. I like to bring the paint around even the edge of a canvas panel. Um, some artists don't. They paint the edges black. It's been dark in my corners a little bit. So why do I darken the corners? Keep the viewer in the painting. 
Um, you don't have to do it every time. You don't have to do it every corner. Just something I do. Nope, it's not totally dry. It's lifting up a little bit there. Or not dry enough. You want it to tack up enough so it you can paint over it. Oh, and see, so you can tell already I'm not... I see in beginning uh, acrylic painter groups, you know, how do I blend with acrylics? It dries so fast. And here I, on purpose, dried it. Because you can just paint values and shades of color right over, I'm not really liking how that looks, uh, right over the top of what you just painted. You don't really have to blend is what I'm trying to say so much. You can optically blend. There's a good word. All right, I think we'll leave that alone a little bit. I'm gonna dry with a hair dryer. Hey, I've got too many distractions. I just realized I think I was going to paint my sky first originally when I put the tape on. <laughs> so I'm going to move it. The painter guy is not coming today. He's going to come in a week. So I was messing around with that a little bit. I think I'm going to, gosh, I wish I knew how long this one's going to take me. I think I'm going to time lapse a little bit here and then pop back in just to keep the video shorter and in one video. I'll be back in a bit. talking in that last section and I didn't have my microphone on <laughs> I am so sorry I think I can edit it um, and tell you what I was saying so I used a really dark grade purple for the tr indication of trees and some hills and something in the background and then this is uh, some of my purple with some yellow and then I just used a 1 8 inch Royal Lang nickel. I think it used to be a little knife brush, but it's just been trimmed and worn down to a fuzzy little brush. Oh, and then I used the General's charcoal pencil I showed you, just so I kind of know where my tree trunk's going. So hopefully this makes sense. I super apologize, guys. I am clearly learning how to use my new microphone. Everybody's learning something here. Um, I got some zinc mixing white. You could use um, matte medium or gloss medium in your titanium white. I like the mixing white. I have it. So I'm going to put some out. And then I think I'm going to use a couple different brushes for clouds. You could use one brush. I've got a cloud video. Um, that shows you a bunch of different tools for making clouds. I like switching because it's fun. You, I mean, I could try and do a one brush painting but I've already used that little guy so I'm gonna get my brush a little bit wet oh this is a uh, pretty sure it's a three-quarter inch Menta Royal Lang nickel it's I've rubbed off the size and this mixing whites kind of it'll feel different to you I tend to want to put a little bit of water with it which makes it dry faster um, but smooths it out a little bit for me I think we're just gonna push in a big cloud, which is why I wanted to use a big brush. To 
I tend to make little clouds. We're gonna try for a bigger one here. And I'm hoping that the purple is gonna show through. I'm not sure, I guess we'll, one person said clouds were supposed, she heard that they were, or I think it was a she, they were supposed to run off the edge of the painting, but not always, just depends. Oops, depends on, you know, are you doing a couple little clouds or one big one or? So this might dry so, might, it's gonna dry darker and it might dry so much darker that we'll, do, we'll just end up doing it again. Let's see, I need to look at one of my cloud references. I just kind of got the same shape going there. Let me bring that up. I think that's kind of nice. Maybe. So I don't have much on my brush. I kind of want to put one. As my tree's going to go, I kind of want to put one. Here. Actually, I'm probably going to have my light. Oh no, my light's going to be going this way. I'm going to have a shadow on the tree. That might be too dry to get it to. There we go, I kind of like that. I like those little like updraft wispy things. Okay, I think we need to let that dry. All right, so we probably want, we want to lead, so this tree ends up like a, to be like a stop. So I'm thinking is leading you into the painting this way and then this keeps you from going all the, all the way off the, the edge of the painting. And then there's a dark dark thing there to help pull you in. So that, and then I think I'm gonna have a cloud here. So you kind of have a little bit of this motion going on. Not totally, but a little bit. It's kind of direct the person looking at the painting's eye. Oh, that makes nice. The split's making really nice little clouds. That might dry really dark too. I'd rather go really light and then add. Cause I'm kind of seeing how the painting relates and I really want more purple. That ended up looking kind of rusty brown. And I'm not real happy with that yet, but I'm not sure what I want to do. I'm just trying to be random, which I think is one of the harder things to do when you paint. Okay, I'm gonna time lapse from here. A few thoughts. So I don't know how many times you've seen me adjust and paint these clouds and then with the zinc white and some water, I think I've, I've done the rain that's coming down a couple of times. 
So that could be annoying or that can help you go a little slower, you know, and then be a little, oh, I don't know how to describe it. Let it develop, you know, let the clouds kind of come out of, of the brush strokes. I've kind of changed the shape a little bit a couple times. Oh, and then to get rain, you know, straight down or at an angle. Um, I don't know if this should be at an angle. I did it because it's gonna sort almost like another stop. It's pointing towards the focal point of the painting. Um, and I think I wanna put, I've switched brushes a couple of times. I don't know. Oh, this is a number eight. I think it's a filbert. It's a little funny shaped. I don't know if that's because I've worn it down or trimmed it. But I think I wanna take a little bit of this purple that I was using in parts of the clouds. I want, I want some of this purple. It's got kind of red on me, so I'm just gonna basically glaze over with some zinc white and some of that purple. Because as I mentioned, the reds drop out as you go back. So I wanna cool that down a little bit. I don't know if I need to. I just want to. <laughs> Well, and purple and green is really pretty together. I've got kind of a yellowy green going here. In my opinion, I guess, not everybody. Okay. I'm just gonna soften it up a little bit. I don't know that that shows, it gets so light. So I, I had another person asking in a beginning acrylic painters group, I think as long as you've got a decent layer of paint underneath, you can put a, this is quite a thin layer. There's quite a bit of water on it. Cause I'm gonna put, I like to put a, I had mentioned this before, a gel gloss isolation layer on it. And it like seals it all together cause acrylic likes to stick to acrylic. It'll stick to glass too. Don't put glass on your acrylic paintings. Um, I think it'll all fuse together. I might be wrong though. If somebody knows, let me know. Okay, I think it's time to put our tree on. Oh, I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna dry this with a hairdryer. I think I'm gonna let this dry a minute and I'll be back. Okay, I dried that with a hairdryer for a little bit. So I just kinda want, well, I drew tree, my tree out with ovals, basically. Um, I just kinda want a little, oh, a little, guide. So one thing about the time lapse that helps me is I don't feel I need to chat with you guys. It's easier for me to paint. But of course, these videos are for you. <laughs> so maybe I have the focus in the wrong place. Maybe another That might be enough to get me going. So you could do the tree and the tree trunk first. You could do, um, especially the further off in the distance it is, you could do just the shape of the tree and then draw um, the trunk in later. Oh, and I probably need to mix some greens here. I'm gonna want a darker green. Put some blue in it. Maybe mute it too. Um, let me know if you like seeing me mix the paint. I, I love the feedback. I can't, I can't please everybody. Um, I've gotten some comments where people like want to see every step on a pet portrait painting and I'm like, it's just too much video. Wait, even time lapse, it's just too much video. I don't know if we could even get it uploaded. Well, maybe I'll just see what that color looks like. 
the value is more important than the color as far as, I mean, people like blue skies, green trees. Um, I think I've talked about some people do portraits with really bright color. So I'm going to start dark and my light's coming. So I'm going to have a shadow here. So my light's coming from the, probably the top right area, shining towards the left. It's, so like with my clouds, it's always hard. So that's what's nice about the mixing white is you kind of scribble them in and then you change them. And like I had a big cloud up here that you can barely see because it dries so much darker, um, especially with the mixing white and some water. So I don't want my tree to be a regular shape, but the tree I'm looking at for reference photo is a fairly, fairly roundish tree. I'm just gonna force myself to start and I can lighten up. I'm also gonna try to leave some sky holes, but if I paint them out, we can just put them back in. So I don't know if I wanna come all the way down. I wanna leave my, my split there. Oh, can you see that? How I draw the, drew the tree with the white, white charcoal? Give you a little closer look there. I almost painted out my branch there, which is okay. As I mentioned, I can put it back in. So I'm trying to paint shapes that I kind of see in my reference tree, and it's not gonna turn at all. It's not gonna turn out at all like my reference. As I've mentioned before, I think eventually I'll be able to afford to buy the license to show these photos on YouTube. I use Pixabay. Um, Unsplash, uh, Paint My Photo, I think it's pmp-art.com. Okay guys, I'm going to think a little bit. I don't know. It's kind of like painting clouds, like where are we going to go with this? Maybe I'll just grab some lighter green. Maybe that'll help make sense. It's lighter over on this side. it different than my reference so I'm kind of hesitating and I want to leave some sky holes I don't know if that makes sense with that bigger trunk I wonder if we need a bigger tree or we need a littler trunk <laughs> bigger tree or littler trunk so so far in this landscape painting while I think about this We've done, now we've done color, clouds with color a different way. Pretty much, we just used, I didn't add any color to those clouds, I just used the background color. Uh, in the other video, I added color to the clouds. And we've added rain. And then this is pretty much the same as the pre previous video. Okay. I don't know that that helped me figure out what I want to do with my tree. I'm going to grab just a little brush and do a little... Oh, that's too much black. Oh, that's a crappy brush. Maybe you want something a little nicer. Grab a little flat brush. Let's kind of get some tree on here. Oh, I don't have enough paint. <laughs> Come on. I don't want a lot of paint. I just want to kind of sketch. Okay, there we go. I, got, I grabbed a little water and it's flowing a little better. I'm almost thinking, whoop, I'm kind of scrubbing out my tree. I'm almost thinking I might want to um, scamp my tree. I was having a hard time deciding. Oh, I don't know, 
looks kind of wimpy. I wish I could hear you guys. What do you think? Well, I might have too many branches going. Like, I have three of them going almost parallel. So let's bring one down. Take a little crud on my brush. I don't know if that branch is going to end up showing. Okay. So I'm hating that tree, just so you know. <laughs> and don't give up, though. Or and keep painting. I mean, some of it's practice. Some of it is just layers. Some of it is... Okay, this video isn't going to make it to YouTube. <laughs> I think I'm going to work on the green. Don't. That looks like a little kid. Oh, some, sometimes people say, oh, it looks like a little kid did it. Oh, I think that looks like a little kid did it. You know. A lot of times it's values and playing with it. All right, I'm going to do this. Help me be a little happier, I don't know. Because I'm looking at a really full tree. I might end up painting out all these branches. I want a bigger, I want a bigger tree. So let's stop being scared. She says, ha ha. This is such good practice for me. Um, I hope you enjoy this. I hope it's good for you too. struggle a little bit. I still have a pretty even tree and I don't want to get too close to there. I could paint it out but let's just not do that. So let's... I think I'm gonna put sky holes back in because I'm just too tight. Oh, and I don't, hopefully my hair isn't getting in the way as I lean over here. Okay. I wonder if it's because my tree's too straight, too. I originally had, had it a little bit angled in my drawing. better. Hopefully Favorite Daughter has some background music playing as I think here. I keep wanting to round it out, which is normal. And you can tell I'm a little frustrated with myself. Ah, oh, that's a little better. Bring it out even a little more. A little up. A little over. Make it a little heavy. Okay, that might be better. Let's let that dry. So I, with oil paint, you don't like it. You scrape it off. With acrylic, as long as, as long as you don't mind painting, and this isn't very thick at all, but you can keep painting over and painting over and paint it over. Which is another reason why I like to kind of go thin and then work up to a little thicker. I'm going to play... So that's that gray dark purple that I used here. Oh, maybe I don't actually want to use that. Hang on, I'm changing my mind. Just because I'll... I want to keep that pushed back. So we want a little warmer browns. Or even black if we're going to go real dark. And just keep that cool purple off in the distance. That didn't get much darker. I'm gonna grab some of that blackish. 
So one of the things I want to do is stick my head right over it so it's in my bifocals. I have progressive, not bifocals. So it's in my reading range. But then I can, oh, I can feel my hair touching the phone. So like for you guys, I would put this up in, on an easel or whatever you like. If you like painting flat on a tabletop, do that. Um, so a lot of times I hold it and paint. But I figure all that movement can be a little annoying. So all I'm doing is trying to give this a little shape so I like it better. I think maybe I'll paint. I'm gonna paint the shadow. And I'm also starting to worry about how long this video is getting. So I think I'm gonna time lapse the rest of this tree to keep it a keep this video a little shorter. Alright, I thought I'd pop in. So this tree's getting better. I added a horizontal branch just trying to not make it so um, I never know how to describe that I'm trying not to clone things I'm trying to make them random and then I mix, mixed a really light green to show where the Sun's coming from um, and then you don't want to overdo it I might even go back because that's easier said than done you know hey guys don't overdo it and it really doesn't matter what brush you use. You notice I just, since I had the tree trunk going with this flat brush, I would say uh, Royal Lane Nickel. I don't know. It's all worn off. Uh, it's a quarter inch. And so you don't want too bright because trees don't go white, white. I wish I could show you my reference photo. Just take a couple of photos if you're outside. You know, and then I, I have a few, it's close enough that I think you would see a few leaves, but you mostly see shapes. I think that might be pretty darn good. Um, I'm not sure if I like, well, oh, shoot, after I said that. Oh, that didn't change anything. It's gonna break that up just a smidge, just because everything else is kind of broken up. I think I should put some leaves over there because that branch is pretty thick so we should probably bring most of the leaves down if that makes sense where I've kind of got that branch showing a little bit which I think is okay it's starting to look better I think we might want to put in some of the the landscape or er, grass I don't know what we're gonna what that is. So, oh, and then for the shadow, um, oh, it, it's a guesstimate unless you're actually using a reference photo. It could come back more this way if the light's coming more from the top. If the light's coming, it gets interesting. So basically, I just drew out a horizontal and then just kind of distorted, but still have horizontal strokes because it's on the ground. And it's basically almost like a cloud on the ground. And then we can put some other details to help um, disguise. But I think that's pretty good. I think that's all I need to say. All right, I'm gonna work on the ground and then we might be about done and I'll pop back in. Oh, I know one thing I wanted to do and I've thought of it a couple times. Um, I'm rinsing out my brush. I'm gonna grab, oh, this one's probably big enough. I don't think I've used this one yet. I wanna put a little yellow green up in here. A little yellow maybe, maybe I'll we'll just take a little, I get scared so I use a, oh sorry that was probably super loud. So I got out some matte medium. Now, you don't wanna shake it, but just kinda gently stir it. I'm just gonna put a couple drops right next to my yellow. 
because it, it's going to go over this bluish purple. So I don't know that we need to mix a color. But I'm going to go really transparent with the matte medium. Just, let's see. I'm trying now. I'm trying to decide where. All right. So we probably don't want to put it over there. We want to keep everybody in here. Let's put a little. Oh, actually, maybe I will. Maybe I'll so I don't stop at the tree. And I'm just kind of blurring it out a little bit. That's pretty strong. You could always grab some straight up matte medium Oop. or gloss medium. I like the matte because I don't want to see the shiny when I'm painting because the, the Liquitex acrylic is pretty much dry matte. Well, maybe we should have muted that down a little bit. I'll have to see how that dries. But that kind of will help you, you know, bring the colors. I think that's going to dry okay. Sort of marry the painting together. Just sort of an artist trick tip. Bring some of your sky color into the ground and bring some of your ground color into the sky. Okay, I'm going to work on the ground and maybe a little bit of the tree and we might be almost done. This is really starting to come together. So I um, I kept wanting to make that tree bigger. It's totally up to what you guys like. And then I just put some stray medium tone, medium value leaves sort of off against the sky. I think I'm going to put a sky hole right there. I don't want to forget. Um, now I'm thinking these are kind of flowers. And now that I'm looking back here, so now I'm kind of working all over the painting. Oh, and I cooled it down, so I only I have the yellows sort of. It was pretty intense, which if you like that, I liked it. But I thought, well, I'll cool it down, especially around here to bring your eye more this way. Even though I said the yellows drop out as you go back, I'm kind of playing with values and cool and warm a little bit, just to entertain and to. I want to keep you in the painting. Um, but I think I want this a little lighter. So I'm just going to take some zinc white. Might need a bigger brush. Of course, it's going to dry pretty dark. It's going to... It's going to dry darker. Which acrylics do, but when you have zinc white and a little bit of water, it it can dry down. You'll, you'll just have to play with what brand you have. And I also don't want to lose my, my rain. Well, that might be enough. I just kind of want to keep bringing you into the painting. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. <laughs> Did I sound tough? I hope I sounded tough there. And if you've been with me this far, so far in the video, thank you, thank you. I've done this little bit in I think every sky video. Oops. Bring one. Man, you can keep playing and playing and playing with the painting. It's done when you say it's done. Oop, I kinda like that, and then I I scooched it out. 
Maybe we'll just leave that like that. I'm trying to be random. I don't know, do we need little clouds over here or not? Most of our action's here. So then I put one in. Okay, let's put a sky hole in, see how that works. So I, we still have sky color there. Maybe a little white with it. That's, we're, I'm gonna put it right here. So we're kind of looking for something close to that. That's way too much white. Well, you know, after I do that, a lot of times it isn't too much white. Let's see if we can put a... Oh, I kind of like that. I also think that's close enough. Do we want a little... So then it's like, okay, do we want another sky hole? Oh, man. It's like, uh, I don't want to ruin it, and I know I can paint it over and fix it. Let's put one kind of in here somewhere. Cool. Sky holes, guys. I don't know if that's a technical term, if it's an art term. You know, even rules in art, I mean, artists always break up, so they're kind of like guidelines, you know? What else? Oh, I was put, putting in some white flowers. Do we need more white flowers? I think I'm going to turn off the video and, and think about this for a minute. So what I did was I stepped back from it. And I've got kind of too much, in my opinion. I want a cloud here. I'm also scared to put one in. I've got almost maybe too much of a strong line. Um, you know, this is totally personal preference. So maybe I'll just stop because my paint's drying. If nothing's coming off. And then I think I want the whites too wimpy. <laughs> Another technical term. I think I need to get a, I don't know, I'm a little scared, so we'll use some mixing white. I put a little bit in the shadow. Oh, and then I can put another color here. Oh, you know what I might want to do too is, um, I don't know if we need a little something. It's far enough away, I don't know if we need any grass right there. Maybe we'll just leave it. Oh, and then I don't know that I mentioned, but I added like a bump and then I made it fatter at the bottom, which helped the tree sit better. They're usually wider at the base than at the top. So that helped me like it better. And then the bump, so it wasn't, you know, just a stick. <laughs> I laugh a lot. I hope my chuckling doesn't bother you guys. I think this is fun. You know, I really was hating that tree and it's growing on me. Um, it's just art. It's a little bit like putting a puzzle together. You know, now I'm trying to be random and chat. Oh, these are like little white prairie flowers. We've got a little spring rain going. Not much of a breeze, just a little breeze. I don't know if that's even going to show. So we have it coming straight down, but then I was going to trail it off a little bit. That's kind of fun. What I'm going to need to do is dry this with a hair dryer. I should put a couple. The layers really help. I ended up with almost three layers here because I pulled some of the cools down. I know I put two. And then I, I purpled that up a little bit more. I think it looks yummy. I like all the color. Okay, I'm definitely going to think about this a little more and be back and say probably say goodbye. Okay, I think what's bugging me is this is gorgeous, but I want I want to keep your eye more over here. 
So I'm gonna grab some titanium white and just kinda play with this cloud that wasn't very strong or very prominent and have it grab some light and maybe break the dark line there. My paint's drying out. So I've been painting for, oh, I started this in the morning and then I had a meeting. Plus the setup time. I think I said I had a half hour, hour just looking for photos and, and drawing my sketch, my game plan, which I didn't totally follow. I was gonna have more yellow there and white there. I changed it up a little bit. Um, oh, I don't know, we, we're probably, I could be at five hours on this thing. <laughs> so don't think that this is super fast. You know, and plus I like it, like I'll go wash my brushes and let this, after I dry it with a hair dryer, let it dry. Take a look at it. See that dried, zinc white dries definitely darker on me, which I like. So now I'm kind of scared. I think it's good when I say I'm scared. Cause you, it's like, oh, I like this. I like a lot of things about this. I don't want to ruin it. That always gets to be a problem. I think every artist does that. You do get more confident and know that you can fix things. That's helpful. Might make you a little mad for a little bit, but it's kind of like finding the edges on a really difficult puzzle and then finding some more ed edges and it starts to come together. Oh, actually what I might do. I don't know if that did anything. Um, so you just keep playing with the pieces and putting more and more together. I don't know if I like that yet. Maybe we want a couple of... So kind of what I do is I almost like, I almost kind of zigzag. And I like this really washed out purple because it pushes you that way. And then this pushes you this way. And this says, oh, you know, almost says like, stop. This pulls you over here, even though it's gorgeous, which is why I was, I'll put some more white over here. So I'm thinking about, I think I've said this maybe 20 times. I don't know how many times I've said, I'm just thinking about both entertaining you and, and keep, I know I've said keeping you in the painting several times. And a lot of times I do this and it's so thin as zinc white, it just disappears. It doesn't even show. What I think I might do is have a little dinner and take a look at it because I've been right on top of it for several hours and come back and I definitely will say goodbye. This video has got to be getting long. I'm calling it done. I added some more white up here and I think that helps. I'm gonna, oh, I can't quite see it through my, my phone as it's videoing. Um, I also think it helps I did less dotty and more shapey. <laughs> Do you like those technical art terms? Because I don't have a lot of, I mean, there's a little specks in here, but they read as leaves, I think. Instead of saying I have flowers here and they're dots, I decided the shapes were better because I pretty much just have shapes or brush strokes. So here's kind of like you're walking up closer and then it quickly gets further away with the horizontal brush strokes. I like the more dramatic sky where it's darker. I think it's light enough here. I could always come back tomorrow with a little zinc white or something. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know. Um, if this is helpful, so this is a little bit harder painting than the previous landscape I have with the colorful clouds. We added some rain, streaky rain, and then we had another little teeny tree video and had just straight up one point perspective. So we're kind of building on, on these and I hope um, 
I hope they help you. I hope it helps you to know that I probably spent five hours on this one. It's a quite a simple painting. But I let it build um, and because I get nervous. Everybody gets a little nervous whether they admit it or not. Or maybe some artists don't anymore after you've been painting for I don't know how many years. Um, thank you, thank you for staying with me this long. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your feedback. I love the comments. I'm getting to know some of you. That's really fun. I appreciate you supporting this channel. Um, several of you sent money, I assume, for the traceables. It just says, do you want to support Annie when you send it through Venmo or PayPal? So I never really know for what aspect it's for. Okay, I'm really chatty today. Great big art hugs. I hope to chat with you soon. Bye, guys.